this is going to require me to do something different than I've done before. And that is involving what's called the Bot Framework Composer. I'm going to talk about this in a minute afterwards. It's a brand new thing. It's super, super new. It's still in preview. It came out at Ignite um, and it wasn't massively talked about, but this is amazing. This lets you build bots without needing to write any code. Let's try. So we know we're going to build a weather bot. It's going to ask people what the weather is and then it's going to give them the weather. So what do we need to do in order to do that? We need to ask them. Uh, we need to find out they want the weather, first of all. So they're going to come to the bot and ask for the weather. Then we need to ask them where they want the weather for, so what location. And then we need to go and look up the actual weather. We're going to use an API to look up the weather. Here's Postman. If you're familiar with it, then great. If you're not, it's just a thing for sending or receiving HTTP requests. So I've got a nice long HTTP string here that will get me the weather in London because uh, I've got the location London here and it's going to return it in metric because that's I'm UK and it's going to give me the weather here, overclass clouds and some temperature. So that's a good start. So I've got an API I can use. So how do I use this bot framework composer? Well, let's go new. Let's go create from scratch. Let's call it Tom's weather. So this is absolutely a thing you can do today. I'll talk in a second about how you can get hold of this. So it's made a entry point here called greeting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send a response back to the user and say, hi, I do weather. Type weather to get started. So I've given the user something they can do. Type weather to get started. Now, what does that mean, type weather to get started? Well, if I come back up here, this bot needs to understand what users are saying. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Lewis is the language understanding intelligence service that natural language processing I spoke about, fully supported here. Um, in the interest of time, I'm actually not going to use it. I'm just going to use a regular expression. So that old kind of keyword style that I said was really bad. Yep, I'm going to use that here. So what, what I'm saying is if the user says weather, then we know they want the weather. And that's pretty boring, but it's good for now. OK, so I've got my greeting where I'm telling my users to sort of type weather to get started. So what we need when they do type weather, we need a trigger based on that. So let's say new trigger. This type of trigger is recognizing a specific intent of type weather, which is the one I created. There are some other different things you can respond to, um, different activities and different dialogues. I'm going straight in with this intent of weather. So let's sit in that one. So what happens then? Um, this is the intent of, like, I could do all the code in here for doing all the weather. What I'm actually going to do is um, do a new dialogue. It's just a nicer way of splitting up code um, into different chunks. So I'm going to do this new dialogue and let's create a new dialogue. Let's call it get weather. I could type correctly. Let's do that. So that takes me to the nice new uh, begin dialogue, get weather. Uh, right, so what do I need to do now? I need to ask the user um, where they want the weather for. So let's ask a question with some text. Look at all these different choices I've got, date and time, multiple choice, number input. I'm just going to choose this one for text and I'm going to say, where do you want the weather for? So I'm skipping out loads of functionality that's in here. I could add different lines in here and it would randomly choose between them to make my bot feel a little bit more uh, less scripted. I'm going to tick always prompt so that we can come back to this and run it again and again and again, and it will kind of ask each time. Um, let's have a look. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is, uh, let's have a look. I'm going to put the uh, results of this in, here we go. So. Uh, the out the property to fill. So when the user fills in where they want the weather for, I'm going to say um, user dot location. So this is just a field um, that is going to get filled with that location. And then let's send back another response that says getting you the weather in user dot location see i'm using those curly brackets um to kind of put that uh, put that parameter back in okay so we haven't really done anything except 
found out where the user wants the weather for and then told them we're going to go and get it. But we can click start bot at the top, do some reloading and it'll think about it. And I can click test in emulator. The emulator is a local emulator I can use to test my code locally, which is super useful, allows you to kind of quickly iterate on different things, um, kind of start and just sort of keep going with it, get, you know, try different things out and all the rest of it. Um, which he says, but it might not actually work, which is going to be fun. Um, we'll let it carry on and see if it kind of wants to come back in a minute. Um, I'll just sort of refresh this and see if I can't get it to work. Um, so where are we at? Let's let this load. And we've got the got a nice begin dialogue. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Right. Yep. Click start bot again. Test emulator? No, okay, fine. Well, we'll carry on anyway, even though we can't get it to work just yet. Um, what this should do really is open a link in a new page, um, which then triggers off to the bot framework emulator, which is the way that we can test this stuff locally. I've got a good way of showing it um, once it's deployed as well, so I'm not super worried. We're gonna carry on anyway, and then we'll show you it kind of as it looks at the end. So having got the weather, the next thing we need to do is call this API. And that's actually not as hard as you think it's going to be either, because one of the things we can do down here is access an external resource, such as sending an HTTP request. So what does that do? Um, so what I need to do is make this call here to this uh, API, but instead of here where it's got Q equals London, I'm going to replace that with uh, my one. So. I'm going to make a get request and it's going to be to this URL here and let's put the HTTPS in the front and where it says Q equals London, I'm just going to replace that with user.location just like that <clears throat> and then I'm going to put the result property um, in, the, so the result property is the thing that comes back from the API call, so it's this massive blob of JSON. So I'm going to put that into another um, property just so we don't lose it. Okay, so that makes the API call. Now that may work, it may not. So what we should do really is put an if statement in to make sure. So there's an if else. I'm just and I'm trying to just choose interesting things so you can see how powerful this really is to use. Um, so I can do a check here to say. Well, actually take that weather data, <clears throat> take, take the status code, and if it's 200, then great. Uh, if it's not 200, let's just send a message back to the user to say, oops, something happened. Uh, but if it is, then what we could do is, um, let's think, let's just set a property. Um, what we'll do is set a new property. What all I'm going to do is set, make a new property um, and call it weather. And I'm just going to pull out the actual content of that HTTP call just to save me typing it again that each time because it's kind of tedious to type that each time. And now we have a thing called dialog weather, which is actually the weather, which means that we can send a response back to the user of something like, and I'm just going to save you watching me type. Um, let's just go through this. So right now in location, it's dialog.weather.main.temp, which is the temperature, degrees, with, and then the type of weather. And that is how we can build up a bot that just kind of calls out to an API um, and surfaces it back again. So that's how the whole thing ties together. This button is still not, oh, it is going to work. Random. Okay, fine. Great. That's good. Um, so what this should do, and I'm keeping everything crossed, is open the local emulator, uh, meaning that we can actually see it working. Uh, no. Okay, so hi, I do weather, type weather to get started. So that's the thing I said right at the beginning. So if I was to type weather, where do you want the weather for? Okay. Let's go with London to start, nice easy option. Getting you the weather in London. Right now in London, it's 9.28 degrees over class clouds. Right, 
So you might think that's a bit made up. So let's make some changes so you don't think I'm just kind of pulling the wall completely over your eyes. So let's change this to here's your location weather. Okay. Because I didn't get the chance to kind of run the bot halfway through so you can see it being built, this is kind of a good way to make sure that you don't think I'm just making it up. And we'll choose a different city as well. <clears throat> uh, so, wait for the emulator to come back again. Right, I do weather. Like weather to get started. Let's do weather. Uh, let's do New York. Here's your New York weather. Right now in New York, it's 0.5 degrees with clear skies. So in actually a little under 20 minutes, I would say that's probably more like 10 minutes, we've created a weather bot and we didn't have to write any code. So this is amazing. How do we go from this to running in Microsoft Teams? Okay, so this is in preview. This whole thing is in preview. So this is gonna get better, but let me just show you it now publishing. There's some buttons here that help you push this stuff into Azure and set everything up for you. You don't need to know how any of it works. Basically, uh, you fill in some stuff here. And uh, 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 no, there we go. Um, like so. And then it gives you a script to run. It says go and run this in your terminal and all will be good. Um, that takes ages to run. Uh, it takes a long time to run, uh, and I'm not going to do it now because it's not much fun to watch. But what that will do is create all the Azure resources you need and deploy out to um, Azure for you every time you change it. Um, I, I did this yesterday. Um, I did this with another bot yesterday, very, very similar, also a weather bot um, that I was kind of doing just to make sure it worked for, for this session. Um, so I can quickly show you what that looks like um as well so give me two seconds um because i'll do that right now so uh, this is what it creates when you run that script and it pushes into azure it creates all these bits for you including a bot channel registration which if you've never seen before you don't need to know anything about if you've done anything with bots um you'll be familiar with the bot channel registration it's a nice way of it's the registration that Azure needs to kind of register your bot. There's a nice testing web chat function here as well. Um, very similar to the local one, except you're running the actual code um, and you're doing it straight in the published code um, on Azure. So you can see actually it's a very similar bot. It's the one I wrote yesterday uh, with a slight bug in it, but it always uh, remembers. It only uses, only asks you once and doesn't prompt you again. So it's, it's only ever kind of stuck with getting the weather in New York at the moment until I fix it but you can kind of see it's the same bot. So you go through that process to deploy it. Getting it in Teams, again, you don't need to do anything development wise. This is bot framework. So if you remember me saying earlier, it's an abstraction on lots of different services. If you come down to channels in here, you can see all those different services that are supported down at the bottom. Um, and one of them is Microsoft Teams, which is running. I haven't tried this yet, so this may or may not work, but in theory, you ought to be able to go straight to Microsoft Teams and use this same bot and talk to this bot um, for getting the weather. So we'll see. I probably should, I should have tried this first because it, oh, no, uh, maybe, yes. Uh, let's do uh, let's do Manchester. Perfect. So now it's running in Teams. So that same bot that we wrote using the UI without actually writing any code, we pushed through almost the same bot. If you can time the thing I did last night and waited for it to deploy, um, you can see it's the same thing. We pushed into Azure from there. We've made it available in Teams. We haven't needed to write a single line of code to make that happen. 